Hi there, welcome to the lab. Today we're going to have a look at a pocket multimeter. This is XB866. This is an item that I found on AliExpress and thought it might be interesting to have a look at. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Digital multimeter. And let's get into the box. I guess this is designed to hang on a shelf. Auto range, DMM. It's got a list of instructions at the top here. You can see, as long as I get rid of the glare, shows all the things that it does. And we'll be getting into that, and I guess this is designed so that it can be, can kind of stand up like that if you fold it over, so that's kind of nice. And also in the box, we've got uh, an operator's manual, about 19 pages, and that's all in English, and describes the unit in a lot of detail. Probably a lot more detail than most of us would need. And I think that before we can do anything, yeah, I've got to put some batteries in here. So that'll be step number one, getting the batteries in. There's a single screw that holds the battery compartment shut, which is a good thing so that it doesn't uh, slide open. But one of the things that I notice is this sort of suggests that you're supposed to push the compartment open. Uh, that's actually a bad idea, it turns out. Uh, it's better to just lift it up here and ease it out because this piece catches the spring in the battery compartment uh, and it doesn't actually slide. So that's kind of a bad thing, but I guess no harm done. I did try to force it pretty hard, unfortunately. So the spring's a little bent. But that looks like it takes two AAA batteries. So, oops, one here, one here. Oops. Quickly make sure that that powers up. Yeah, okay. So, so, now before we seal it up, I just want to point out that there is a fuse that's visible here, but it looks like the fuse is soldered into the board. We'll have a look at that again when we do the teardown. But that's kind of a super inconvenient way to have a fuse in anything. All right, let's close it up and get to putting it through the routine. One thing I should have pointed out, there's no brass insert here, and so you'll need to be careful uh, putting that screw in and out so as to not strip the plastic too much. Now you'll notice that off appears in two different spots here and we can see all the features and functions and the probes are permanently wired in here I think. There's no way to, I don't think this comes out. No, so the probes are in here. Yeah, so they're not socketed. The probes are in there for good. Powering up the unit. We just have this dial here that goes into the various uh, modes. And then there's the select button that allows us to switch between the items that have multiple settings. So that was continuity and diode. And then between AC and DC amp, uh, microamps and AC and DC milliamps. So that does that. And then uh, it can be set, uh, it does auto range, but it can also be forced to, to range with the range button. So you can force it into a specific range. And then to get back to auto, we press the range button down for a second or two and it comes back into the auto range mode. So, you know, there are not a lot of features, and the controls are, are pretty common, pretty standard, and, and fairly intuitive, easy to, to figure out. 
We'll start with DC volts. Normally, I would use a pair of banana jacks to uh, connect things, but since these probes are wired in, I've put the probes directly into the banana jack sockets on the calibrator. Right now, we've got zero volts here, zero volts here. That's good. We go up to a tenth of a volt, which is 100 millivolts. This is showing millivolts. And so we're seeing 99.6 volts. Let's go up to half a volt now. Okay, 0 0.501, that's pretty good. One volt, 103, that's pretty good. Let's go to five volts, 501, oh, pretty good. And then we'll just do 10 volts, and that's pretty good as well. Although off by about uh, uh, two one hundredths of a volt, but not really a big uh, a big error there. So pretty good performance for the voltage range, and we could also put this directly into a millivolt range. So that's one millivolt. Look at that, right on. Let's go up to two millivolts. Takes a while, but it very good. Ten millivolts. Very good. So a little bit slow to get there, but very good readings. Very accurate here. Uh, so great performance in the millivolt range as well. Nothing, nothing to, uh, nothing to complain about. Really like that performance. Now for AC voltage, I've got the probes kind of inserted into the banana jacks and you can see a little bit of ghost voltage. Usually, uh, the Bryman is being used as a bit of a reference. Usually they read pretty close to the same thing, but you can see we're about, uh, we're, we're a little further off than typical. Let's turn the power on. So that's pretty good, pretty close, about, about four tenths of a volt difference. Let's do it one more time. Pretty good. Still, once again, about four tenths of a volt different. So, generally, for for these sort of higher voltage readings, that's probably okay. But it's a bit more of a gap than uh, than I typically see between the Bryman and uh, than other meters. Now, resistance. I've got this set to ohms. There, this is putting out twenty ohms. So a little bit high. 100 ohms, not too bad, about uh, off by about an ohm, which is uh, 1%. 200 ohms, that's now showing 0.2 kilo ohms, so that's pretty good. Let's go up to 500. Perfect reading there. Oops, a thousand, so one K. Uh, very good reading there, off by about an ohm, uh, which is uh, less than one percent, a tenth of a percent. Very good reading there, and then we'll just go up to two K. And one point nine eight, uh, very very close to uh, to two K, and so the only shortcoming. That, uh, that I might point out is it does take uh, a little bit of time to kind of settle in. Now we've got uh, DC current. So we're putting out four milliamps from the calibrator, uh, showing 4.02 milliamps on the meter. Eight, showing 806, and then 12, 1208. So the meter is reading a little bit high, but not too bad. So, and I'll just point out that this only has milliamps and microamps. This doesn't have uh, an amp range, uh, likely because we can't move over to uh, to any other jack uh, in order to be able to fuse the circuitry for uh, for an amp range. That would be typical in a multimeter. Now, looking at the microamp range, you can see I've got the calibrator and it's putting out 
0.05 milliamps, that corresponds to 50 microamps. And if we look at the XB866 here, we see 49.9 microamps. Sometimes it touches uh, 50.0. So that's a pretty good reading for, uh, for the range here. Let's put in a different value here. Uh, let's go with maybe 70 microamps. What's that? Oh, that's 700 mi milliamps, 0 0.7, so that's 700 microamps. So uh, we can see three microamps off, not too bad. Let's try another value here, 0 0.02. So 0 0.02 microamps, which is or milliamps, which is 20 microamps. So pretty good. So I mean, pretty reasonable readings. Maybe not uh, bang on like some of the other readings we saw, but in uh, uh, very reasonable kind of performance for the microamp range. I think that's pretty pretty decent. We'll try one more here. We'll go up to. Uh, let's say 0.85 so point or 0.08 so that would be 80 milliamps 0 0.08 milliamps and 80 microamps so once again it's uh it's a, it's a little off not uh, not a, 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 a as precise as in other ranges but uh it really does get you into the ballpark Now let's have a look at continuity. This is with the default built-in probes. You can see that tapping doesn't activate, so we have to have a good solid lengthy tap. And since these probes are hardwired in, we can't really replace these with gold-plated probes that would typically work better. Now for diode check, we've got a test box here. Let's look at how we do. 0.2, that's a good reading. 0.58, that's a good reading. But that doesn't light up. Doesn't light up any of the diodes. So it's not really able to light up any of the LEDs. And of course for the short, it shows a good reading. So there's no tone for the good diodes and it's not able to light up any of the LEDs. So it's not putting out a very high voltage there. Now, a uh, quick teardown. Now you can see here that we've got a fuse here. And as we saw before, the fuse is soldered onto the main control board. There's a PTC here. And so that gives us a little bit of input protection, which is uh, okay. Here's the, the buzzer. And that's kind of glued in place. There's a little pad there, but there's nothing else to see there. The main control circuit here is uh, covered over, so we can't tell what that is. There is an adjustment here so it's that can probably be used for uh, tuning something and there's another adjustment here so uh, clearly this is designed to allow for uh, a manual kind of calibration potentially uh, if required if you had something precise enough to use as a calibration reference I'm not gonna try that but it's nice to to know if you're into that sort of thing, although maybe with such a low end unit, you wouldn't be doing that. And then we can see here the model number here, XB866B. And if this is to be believed as the date 2011, so that's uh, a fairly old design, but of course these sorts of things haven't changed in, in ages. And so it's not like we really need a, a new <laughs> design in order to be able to uh, to measure these sorts of electrical properties. 
This is a nice little meter focused on the basics. All the modes work well, and there's even a fuse for input protection. However, the unit lacks many of the features that have become common on modern multimeters like capacitance and non-contact voltage. They just aren't present here. For a meter that might live in a toolbox or for occasional troubleshooting, this would be a perfectly fine meter. Its small size and integrated case means it would be easy to carry around in a pocket or pouch. If you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and until next time.